from the air, Russia has been providing vital support for President Assad's ground troops. They're attacking the very guys who we want to see topple aside. You, you let American right. planes just no. to, to pass them and let them do that? No, but I might do what we did in Afghanistan many years ago to give those guys the ability to shoot down those planes. That, uh, that equipment is available. Because obviously the Obama administration and the global banking cartels, well, they're not very happy with the idea of Russian airstrikes in Syria. And this is where it starts to get very dangerous because this is how the war starts to escalate. British defense officials have instructed fighter jet pilots to shoot down Russian jets over Syria. And U.S. Senator John McCain says he'd like to arm the Syrian rebels with weapons to shoot down the Russian Air Force. Over the past year or so, the Obama administration has claimed that its bombing campaign in Syria has been a success. However, it's no secret that ISIS has only gotten stronger and they've somehow managed to take over and control lots of territory, about 35% of Syria. Well, that is until now because the tide of the conflict in Syria seems to be turning fast, and that's because the Russians have stepped in. They mean business. The infrastructure used to stage terror attacks in Syria and Iraq has been severely damaged. I mean, they are going in there with a large fleet of warplanes and helicopters, including armored SU-25 ground support fighter jets. They're dropping cluster bombs on terrorists and KAB-500 air bombs on these guys. And guess what? It's working. Intelligence reports show that the militants are in a total panic right now. Desertion has started in their ranks. I mean, it was just one Russian airstrike alone on Saturday that has over 600 militants abandoning their positions as they are trying to, well, they're running scared, all right, and they're trying to flee the country because the Russian Air Force is bombing the living daylights out of ISIS. Yes, the coalition did hit people on Saturday. We did. A terrible accident. That Putin's moves into Syria were closely watched. We knew that he was planning to uh, provide the military assistance that Assad was needing because they were nervous about uh, a potential imminent collapse of the regime. And they only went after ISIL uh, in real way after we started our operation. As for Nusra, they never touched Nusra anywhere in Syria. And uh, whenever we hit Nusra, we are told, look, you shouldn't do this because there are good people next to it or in the middle of Nusra's position. Uh, we have more and more uh, reasons to believe that from the very beginning, the plan was to spare Nusra uh, and uh, to keep it, uh, you know, just in case uh, for plan B or for stage two, uh, when it would be time uh, to change the regime. Deir Azor had been surrounded by ISIS forces for three years. It took humanitarian airdrops to prevent tens of thousands of people from starving to death. Syrian government troops, with Russian help, finally broke through to relieve the siege just a few days before our group arrived. Russia is a friend, a very, very good friend. We like Russia. We respect and appreciate them, this storekeeper told reporters. In the Syrian town of Tartus, they've taken to the streets to praise the president. Russia's president. Vladimir Putin is being hailed as a hero 
for supporting President Assad. At times, it doesn't look the most spontaneous outpouring of emotion. But the Russian Defence Ministry that brought us here as part of a tour assures us this rally wasn't organised for our cameras and that these Syrians really do respect President Putin. We are here to say thank you, Russia. Thank you, uh, Syria. Uh, thank you, Putin. We love you, Russia. I love you, Russia. I love you. Everybody here uh, thank Putin and uh, feeling that Putin is our uh, uh, president. Many of the people we spoke to here said Russia has given them hope. Mohammed told me that Russia's military operation is helping his country. After three years here, he hopes to return home soon to Aleppo. A major part of America's strategy in Syria is the bombing campaign against Islamic State's positions. The lack of video footage of the Pentagon strikes has led to confusion among the American media. But just yesterday, Army Colonel Steve Warren, spokesman for the Joint Task Force, said the stepped-up offensive against ISIS's main source of revenue is paying off. For the first time, the U.S. is attacking oil delivery trucks. Well, the pictures shown by that U.S. channel, though, have nothing to do with America. It is, in fact, footage released by Moscow showing Russian jets hitting oil infrastructure seized by Islamic State. Russia's Defense Ministry spokesman says that there is no film of the U.S. campaign. No video exists from the air bases the U.S. coalition is using or showing their precision bombing raids on terrorist targets. I pledge to every citizen of our land that I will be president for all Americans, and this is so important to me. But now I'm going to show you something that's got accidentally, accidentally got let out on MSNBC. Oh. And uh, so here you go. This, this, this happened last Friday on The Morning Joe Ball. I'm thinking, did the CIA just pull a new guy out to push the war? Who is this guy? And listen to what he says. And now you know why you're never going to see him on MSNBC. Here it comes. Uh, when uh, President Obama said, Assad must go, mm -hmm. and I looked at uh, you and Joe and I said, huh? How's he going to do that? And we know uh, they sent in the CIA to overthrow Assad, the CIA and Saudi Arabia together uh, in covert operations tried to overthrow Assad. It was a disaster. Eventually it brought in both ISIS as a splinter group to the jihadists that went in. It also brought in Russia. So we have been digging deeper and deeper and deeper. What we should do now is get out and not continue to throw missiles, not have a confrontation with Russia. Seven years has been a disaster under Obama continuing under Trump. This is what I would call the permanent state. This is uh, the CIA. This is uh, Pentagon wanting to... So Look other how quiet people have, everyone else is. Yes. <laughs> they're just like stone. They don't know what to say. No, they're like, oh, shit, he's telling... It's the, off script. He's telling the truth about what's happening. <laughs> so he said this is the permanent state, meaning it doesn't matter who's elected. These are. This is the CIA and the NSA. This is the deep state. Other people refer to it as the deep state, the intelligence community. He calls it the permanent state, which I like that because it lets, lets you know that this is the permanent war machine and it doesn't matter who's the president or who's in power. Th these are the people in power, the permanent state, the war machine. That's what he means. And listen, he, he goes on. No way to do that. And so we have made a proxy war in Syria it's killed 500,000 people, displaced 10 million, and I'll say predictably so, because I predicted it seven years ago that there was no way to do this and that it would make a complete chaos. So what I would plead to President Trump is get out, like his instinct told him, He's by the way. That, before, yeah. that was his instinct, right. but then all the establishment, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Pentagon, everybody said, no, no, that's irresponsible. But his instinct is right. Get out. We've done it. We've done it. This is unbelievable. He's saying everybody, New York Times, Washington Post, everybody else. He's laying it down. And you see the stunned look at like, oh, my God, this guy. Somebody forgot to pay this guy. 
somebody is this guy not under contract does he not know you just brought in someone off the street that they're gonna tell you the truth what are you doing Look at them all just stunned sitting there. Like, this is not how it's supposed to go. Here we go. And I, I think further, it is very important that the Russian government consider carefully their continued support for the Assad regime. These heinous actions by the Assad regime cannot be tolerated. The United States stands with our allies across the globe to condemn this horrific attack.